Dear friends, Jai Bhim, Namabutai. Today I am going to start the next chapter about the meditation. I am reading this from this book, The Way to Nibbana by Venerable Narathera. It is published by Buddhist Cultural Center. You can go through another videos which are available and uh, let us start this chapter it is a long chapter i would read uh, you have to keep up with my speed the way to nibbana meditation one way to acquire gain another that lead to nibbana dhampat concentration or samadhi securing a firm footing on the ground of morality the aspirant then embarks upon the higher practice of samadhi the control and culture of mind the second stage of the path of purity before i would go further i would just like to tell you that you can go in the videos about the previous chapters on morality on uh, uh, layman's morality on uh, uh, how to practice metta how to practice uh, mudita and others you can find so i would continue this concentration or samadhi securing a firm footing on the ground of morality the aspirant then embarks upon the higher practice of samadhi the control and culture of mind the second stage of the path of purity samadhi is one pointedness of the mind it is concentration of the mind on one object to the entire exclusion of all else subject of meditation According to Buddhism there are 40 subjects of meditation which differ according to tem- temperaments of individuals they are the 10 kasinas kasinas means devices namely the earth kasina water kasina fire kasina air kasina blue kasina yellow kasina red kasina white kasina light kasina and space kasina that is devices earth device water device fire air blue yellow red white light and space device or kasina the 10 impurities or ashub namely 10 corpses which are rep- respectively bloated discolored festering dissecting dissected dissected gnawed to pieces or not to pieces scattered in pieces mutilated and scattered in pieces Bo- bloodly worm infested and skeleton the ten reflections or anusatis they are namely eight reflections that is one the buddh two the doctrine that is dhammun dhammanusati three the sang four the virtue five liberty six devs or dev seven peace eight death death respectively together with mindfulness regarding the body the four illimitables or the four modes of sublime conduct or brahm vihar namely loving kindness metta compassion karuna sympathetic joy mudit and equanimity these upekha these you can go in the previous chapters in the uh, other videos the one perception that is the perfect of the loathsomeness of material good the one analysis that is the analysis of the four elements the four arupa jhanas namely the realm of infinity of space the realm of infinity of consciousness the realm of nothingness the realm of neither perception nor non perception suitability of subject for different temperaments according to the texts the 10 impurities and the mindfulness regarding the body such as the 32 parts are suitable for those of a lustful temperament because they tend to create a disgust for the body which fascinates the sense the four illimitables and the four colored kasinas or devices are suitable for those 
of a hateful temperament. The reflections of the Buddha and so forth are suitable for those of a devout temperament. The reflection on death and peace, perception on loathsomeness of material food and analysis of the four elements are suitable for those of an intellectual temperament. The remaining objects, chiefly the reflection on the Buddha, meditation on loving kindness, mindfulness regarding the body and reflection of, on death are suitable for all irrespective of temperament. Six kinds of temperaments. There are six kinds of temperaments or charit. In Sanskrit it is called charitra. They are lustful temperament, hateful temperament, ignorant temperament, devout temperament, intellectual temperament, discursive temper temperament. Uh, in Pali they would be called as Raga Charita, Dosa Charita, Moha Charita, Sadha Charita, Buddha Charita and Vitaka Charita. Charita or Charitra that is temperament signifies the intrinsic nature of a person which is revealed when one is in normal state without being preoccupied with anything. The temperament of person differ owing to diversity of their action or karma. Habitual actions tend to form particular temperament. You should remember this thing. Habitual actions tend, tend to form particular temperament. And what other thing it is says that it signifies the intrinsic nature of a person which is revealed when one is in normal state without being preoccupied with anything. And then what it says, habitual action tend to form particular temperament. Raga or lust is predominant in some, while dosa or anger hatred, ill will in others. Most people belong to these two categories. There are few others who lack intelligence and are more or less ignorant or mocharit. Akin to ignorant are those who, whose minds oscillate unable to focus their attention deliberately on one thing. By nature, some are exceptionally devout while others are exceptionally intelligent or mocharit. Combining these six, one another, we get 63 types. With the inclusion of speculative temperament, there are 64 types. The subjects of the meditation are variously adapted to these different temperaments and types of people. Practice of concentration. Before practicing samadhi, the qualified aspirants should give a careful consideration to the subject of meditation. In ancient days, it was customary for pupils to seek the guidance of a competent teacher to choose a suitable subject according to their temperaments. Both, But today, if no competent teacher is available, the aspirant must exercise his own judgment and choose one he thinks most suited to his character. So the temperament you can choose which suits to your character. When the subject has been chosen, he should withdraw to a quiet place where there are the fewest distractions, the forest, a cave or any lonely place in most is most desirable for there one is least liable to interrupt for there one is least liable, liable to interrupt during the practice. It should be understood that solitude is within us all. If our minds are not settled, even a quiet forest would not be congenial place. If our minds are settled, even the hurt of a busy town may be congenial. The atmosphere in which we live acts as an indirect aid to tranquilize our minds. Next to be decided by the aspirant in the most convenient time. When he, when he himself and his surrounding are in the best possible condition for the practice. Early in the morning when the mind is fresh and active and before bedtime, if one is not overtired, is generally the most appropriate time for meditation. But whatever the time selected, it is advisable daily to keep to that particular hour for our minds then become conditioned to the practice. The meditation, the meditating posture, two serves as a powerful method of for concentration. Easterners generally, generally sit cross-legged with the body erected. They split, they sit placing the right foot on the left thigh and the left foot on the right thigh. This is the full position. It is 
if if this posture is difficult as it certainly is to many the half position may be adopted that is simply placing the right foot on the left thigh or the left on the right thigh when this triangular position is assumed the whole body is well balanced the right hand should be placed on the right, left hand the neck straight so that the nose is in a perpendicular line with the navel the tongue should rest on the upper palate the belt should be loose loosened the clothes neatly adjusted some prefer close eyes so as to shut out all unnecessary light and external sights although there are certain advantages in closing the eyes it is not always recommended as it tends to drowsiness then the mind gets out of control and wanders aimlessly vagrant thoughts arise the bo the body loses its erectness quite unconsciously the mouth opens itself saliva dr drivels and the head nods the buddha usually sit with half closed eyes looking through the tip of the nose not more than a distance of 4 feet away those who find the cross leg posture too difficult may sit comfortably in a chair or any other support sufficiently high or high to rest the feet on the ground it is of no great importance that importance what attitude one adopts provided the position provided the position is easy and relaxed how to subdue evil thoughts the aspirant who is striving to gain one pointedness of the mind should endeavor to control any unwholesome thoughts as they are as their very inception as mentioned in the sutta nipat he may be attacked by the 10 armies of the evil one they are sensuous desires discouragement hunger and thirst attachment sloth and torpor fear doubt detraction and stubbornness ill gotten gain praise honor and fame and self praise and contempt for others on such occasion the following practical suggestions given by buddh will be beneficial to all harboring a good thought opposite to the encroaching one that is example loving kindness in case of hatred reflecting upon possible evil consequences example anger sometimes results in murder simple neglect or bodily or, or becoming wholly inattentive to them tracing the cause which led to the arising of the unwholesome thoughts and thus forgetting them in the retrospective process direct physical force just as strong man just as strong man overpowers a weak person so one should overcome evil thoughts by bodily strength with teeth clenched and tongue pressed to the palate advises the buddh the monk by main force thus constrain and coerce his mind and thus with clenched teeth and taut tongue constraining and coercing his mind those evil and unsolitary thoughts will disappear and go to to decay and with their disappearing the mind will become settled subdued refined unified as the mind will become settled subdued unified and concentrated having attended to all these necessary preliminaries the qualified aspirant tries to a solitary place sorry uh, after attending after attending to all these necessary preliminaries the qualified aspirant retires to a solitary solitary place and summoning up confidence as to the certainty of achieving his goal he makes a persistent effort to develop concentration a physical object like a casino or device that is a circle only aids concentration but a virtue like loving kindness has the specific advantage of building up that particular virtue in the character of the person while meditating one may intelligently repeat the words of special special formula since they serve as an aid to evoke the idea they represent however intent the aspirant may be on the subject of his meditation he will not be exempted from the initial difficulties that inevitably comfort a beginner 
The mind wanders, alien thoughts dance before him. Impatience overcomes him owing to the slowness of progress and his efforts slacken in consequence. The determined aspirant only be welcomes these obstacles and difficult obstacles, the difficulties he cuts through and looks straight to his goal, never for a moment turning away his eyes from it. Concentration on Earth Casina, that is Earth device. Concentration on Earth device. Suppose, for instance, an aspirant takes the Earth device for his object. The surface of a circle of about one foot in diameter, diameter is co covered with clay and smoothed well. This concentrative circle is known as the preliminary object. He sets it down some four feet away some four feet away and concentrates on it, saying Pathvi Pathvi, that is Earth Earth, until he becomes so wholly absorbed in it that all adventitious or adventitious thoughts gets automatically excluded from the mind. When he does this for some time, perhaps weeks or months or years, he should be able to visualize the object with closed eyes. On this visualized image, which is a mental replica of the object, he concentrates until it develops into a conceptualized image. According to the Visuddhi mark, the difference between the first visualized image and the second conceptualized image is that in the former the in the former effort of the casino or device object appears, while the later is like the disc of, of a mirror taken out of a bag or a well burnished conch shell or the round moon issuing from the clouds. The conceptualized image neither possesses color nor form. It is just a mode of appearance and is born of perception. As he continually concentrates on this abstract concept, he is said to be in position of proximate concentration and the initiative and the, in, and, the, and the innate five hindrances to spiritual progress, namely sensual desires, hatred, sloth and trooper, restlessness and worry and indecision are temporarily inhibited by means of one-pointedness, zest, initial application, happiness and sustained application respectively. Eventually he gains ecstatic, ecstatic, ecstatic concentration and becomes absorbed in jhana or dhyana in Sanskrit it's called dhyana jhana, jhana jhana enjoying the calmness and serenity of a one pointed mind jhana is a kind of state of mind or you can say no mindness no mind it's a kind of state of mind after you meditate this one pointedness of the mind achieved by inhibiting the hindrances is termed purity of mind the second stage of the path of the on the path of the of purity where the water device a water casino one may take a vessel full of colorless water preferably rain water and concentrate on it saying apo apo that is water water until he gains one pointedness of the mind to develop the fire casino fire device one may kindle a fire before him and concentrate on it through a hole, a span and four fingers wide in a rush mat, a piece of leather or a piece of cloth. One who develops the air casino or air device concentrate on the wind that enters through a window space or a hole in the wall saying vayu vayu that is air air. To develop the color casino one may make a disc or mandal of the prescribed size and color of blue, yellow and red or white and concentrate on it, repeating name of the color as in the case of the earth casino, earth device. He may even concentrate on blue, ye yellow, red and white flowers. Light casino may, developed, may be developed by concentrating on the moon or an unflickering lamplight or on a circle of light made on the ground or the well by sunlight or moonlight entering through a well cervic well cravic cervic well cervic or holes saying alok alok that is light light space casino 
or space device could be developed by concentrating on a hole a span and four fingers wide in either in either a well covered pavilion or a piece of leather or a mat saying okas okas that is space space ashub the 10 kind of corpses the 10 kinds of corpses were found in ancient indian cemeteries where dead bodies were not buried or cons or cremated and flesh eating animals frequent in modern days finding them is out of question anusati buddha's buddhanusati is the reflection on the virtues of buddha as follows such indeed is that ex exalted one worthy fully enlightened endowed with wisdom and conduct well fairer knower knower of the worlds an incomparable charity for the training of individuals teacher of gods and men omniscient and holy dhammanusati is the reflection on the virtues of the characteristic of the doctrine as follows well expounded is the doctrine by the blessed one to be realized by oneself to immediate fruits in writing investigation leading to nibbana to the to be understood by the wise each one for himself sanghanusati is a reflection on the virtue of pure members of the holy celibate orders as follows of good conduct is the order of disciples of the blessed one upright conduct is the order of the disciples of the blessed one of wise conduct is the order of the disciples of the blessed one of dutiful conduct is the order of the disciples of the blessed one these four pairs of person constitute eight individuals this order or the disciples of the blessed one is worthy of offerings is worthy of hospitality is worthy of gifts is worthy of reverential salutation is an incomparable field of merit to the world silanusti is the reflection on the perfection of one's own virtuous conduct kakanusati or sakanusati is the reflection of one's own charitable nature jaganusati devtanusati deities are deities are born in such exalted state on account of their faith and their virtues i too possess them thus when one reflects again and again on one's own faith and other virtues placing deities as witness it is called devtanusati up sammanusati is the reflection on the attributes of nibbana such as the cessation of suffering and the like maranusati is a reflection on the termination of psychophysical contemplation on death enables one to comprehend the fleeting nature of life when 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 one understands that death is certain and life is uncertain one endeavors to make the best use of one's life by working for several development and for the development of others instead of wholly indulging in sensual pleasures constant meditation on death does not make one pessimistic and lethargic but on the contrary it makes one more act active and energetic besides one can face death with serenity while contemplating death one may think that life is like a flame or that all so called beings are the outward temporary manifestations of the invincible karmic or karmic energy just as an electric energy electric light is the outward manifestation of the visible electric energy use various similes as one like one may meditate on the uncertainty of life and on the certainty of death kaya kaya gat kaya gatasti kaya gatsati kaya gatsati is the reflection on the 32 impure parts of the body such as hair hair of the body nails teeth skin flesh sinew sinew bones marrow kidneys heart liver diaphragm spleen lungs bowels mesentery stomach feces feces brain bile phlegm pus blood sweat lymph tears grease saliva nasal mucus articular fluid and urine this this meditation on the loathsomeness of the body leads to dispassion many bhikkhus 
in the time of the Buddha attained arhatship by meditating on these impurities. If one is not conversant with all the 32 parts, one may meditate on one part, such as bones, flesh or skin. Inside this body is found a skeleton. It is filled with flesh which is covered with a skin. Beauty is nothing but skin deep. When one reflects on impure parts of the body, in this, matter, in this manner the compassionate attachment to this body gradually disappears. This meditation may not appeal to those who are not sensual. They may meditate on the innate creative possibilities of this complex machinery of man. Anna Pannasti. I would continue the rest of this chapter from Anna Pannasti in another video. Thank you. Jai Bhim Jai Bharat.